thanks for the chance to share uh, about uh, uh, myself. Well, uh, uh, my name is Francesco Castellaneta and I'm uh, assistant professor of uh, strategy and entrepreneurship at uh, uh, Schema Business School and I also uh, hold the UCA um, JD Chair of uh, Excellence. Well, about my academic background, my journey and my education uh, somehow started at uh, uh, Bokun University, where I took my uh, PhD in uh, uh, management, in business administration and management. And uh, uh, my early research while I was a PhD student focused on, uh, on uh, uh, strategic decision making uh, in, uh, in private equity and uh, uh, organizational learning uh, in private equity. And this has uh, somehow then influenced my uh, entire uh, um, career. Um, well, about my early career and, uh, and inspiration, um, in uh, 2011, then I joined uh, uh, Catholica Lisbon and uh, um, um, in, uh, in Portugal. And uh, uh, despite uh, uh, the uh, uh, economic challenges of uh, Portugal, there was a very, I found a very uh, dynamic startup ecosystem it was amazing. There were many startups, there were many entrepreneurs, uh, there was like a sort of uh, energy in the um, entrepreneurship environment. And I became uh, very, very, very interested in uh, um, entrepreneurship. And this was uh, uh, extremely uh, crucial uh, somehow to uh, shape then my interest in, uh, in uh, entrepreneurship. While I was uh, uh, assistant professor in uh, Catholica Lisbon, I had the opportunity to spend uh, uh, two months at uh, uh, MIT as an uh, international faculty fellow. And that was uh, uh, a very nice experience where I initiated uh, many other um, collaborations. Well. Um, you know, I think we are going to talk later <laughs> again about this, but, you know, my research interests are mostly in a strategy, strategic management uh, and uh, uh, entrepreneurship. I'm uh, really fascinated by uh, how uh, organizations learn. Uh, second, how they protect the knowledge that uh, they have developed. And the third area of interest is uh, how institutions affect uh, basically strategic uh, uh, decision making. Overall, I must say that uh, probably uh, my research is uh, focused on understanding how firms uh, evolve uh, over time and uh, uh, change. I've been fortunate to um, contribute to the field also uh, by participating in some uh, uh, academic activities. I've been uh, director of the PhD program at Schema uh, for six years. Uh, then uh, now I'm uh, 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 involved in the um, Strategic Management Society in the interest group uh, uh, competitive uh, uh, strategy. Uh, teaching also a great passion of mine. I really like uh, uh, to teach uh, in particular entrepreneurship, venture capital, uh, things related to um, strategic management. So this is uh, somehow my journey so far. Okay, well, uh, uh, let me start uh, with uh, uh, the motivation uh, behind uh, uh, the uh, research that I do. Well, my fascination with uh, organizational learning and uh, knowledge appropriability is somehow rooted in my uh, interest, desire to understand basically uh, why some uh, companies fail to adapt uh, and uh, uh, while some others basically uh, are able to adapt to changing environmental uh, conditions. You know, the, the stories of uh, uh, once dominant firms like Kodak, Blockbuster uh, are uh, extremely interesting um, for me because they really highlight uh, the need to understand how firms uh, uh, can really adapt and uh, uh, survive. I must say that uh, these uh, examples uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, the story, the stories of these firms have uh, significantly shaped uh, uh, my research interest on uh, organizational learning uh, and uh, knowledge appropriability. Um, many firms fail 
many firms uh, do not survive uh, to uh, radical changes and uh, understanding which are the factors that uh, drive these uh, uh, was my um, early fascination when I was uh, uh, a PhD student and then obviously my interests uh, have evolved uh, um, over time. In general, uh, my, my, my entire body of research is uh, focused around uh, two areas, okay? Uh, it's uh, about uh, experiential learning, uh, the first one. So the first interest is uh, experiential learning. And uh, uh, this uh, area is uh, uh, focused on understanding how basically organizations learn over time from uh, from uh, uh, their uh, experience. I've analyzed this in the context of uh, uh, private equity and other contexts like merger and acquisitions or uh, uh, venture capital. Uh, you know, in a way, uh, this area of research uh, on experiential learning uh, has been focused on uh, highlighting not only the benefits of uh, uh, accumulating experience, but also the risks of uh, accumulating uh, uh, experiences. And so I've been uh, really fascinated by how experience accumulation at the firm level uh, might uh, foster or increase uh, factors like overconfidence or uh, uh, managerial errors and uh, related things. My second area of research is on uh, uh, knowledge appropriability. This, uh, uh, in a way, looks at uh, how firms uh, uh, protect their uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge assets. And uh, I've been uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, how, in particular, legal and institutional factors uh, uh, affect uh, uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge appropriability. Um, now, mm, this is a very fascinating uh, area of research. It's very broad uh, because you can look at uh, uh, very different issues. Uh, for instance, information asymmetry, industry factors. Uh, I've been uh, more recently working extensively on uh, uh, knowledge work and mobility, and now this uh, somehow affects uh, the uh, knowledge, uh, uh, knowledge appropriability. Um, so this is my big uh, uh, second uh, uh, area of research. This is uh, um, a project on uh, exploring basically the impact of uh, hybrid entrepreneurship on uh, uh, wage uh, uh, dynamics. This uh, uh, working paper, uh, we are uh, in the process of uh, uh, revising uh, it uh, uh, extensively. Basically, uh, studies the um, dynamics, the intricate uh, uh, dynamics between uh, uh, hybrid entrepreneurship, that is basically when uh, individuals uh, um, create their own venture while being uh, uh, employed, and its effect on uh, wage. We focus uh, on uh, Portugal, and uh, uh, in this uh, current version, we are using uh, um, several years uh, of uh, um, of uh, uh, observational data from uh, from Portugal. Now, um, our findings uh, reveal uh, uh, something uh, um, uh, interesting. So, um, hybrid uh, entrepreneurship should uh, somehow contribute to the learning and the experience of uh, of the um, of the worker because uh, allows uh, uh, the uh, uh, the, um, the employee to learn something new, uh, get exposed to entrepreneurship while um, being uh, employed. So there should be a learning component. What we show is that actually there is, uh, contrary to uh, this uh, uh, possible prediction, there is a wage penalty for uh, hybrid uh, entrepreneurs uh, compared to uh, their uh, um, solely employed uh, peers. And this is uh, uh, extremely interesting uh, because, you know, um, the study shows that actually the negative, uh, the negative aspects of being an hybrid entrepreneur are stronger than uh, the positive uh, ones. Something uh, uh, extremely interesting is that uh, we see that there is uh, uh, a wage uh, premium for uh, top performing uh, employees. And this is cool because it means that uh, um, in a way, um, the market values the skills, uh, the companies value the skills of these uh, high performing uh, employees uh, 
and uh, uh, they are likely to uh, give uh, uh, a wage premium to those employees uh, who are engaging uh, in external uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, activity. Now, um, in the study, we have also looked at uh, uh, the gender differences. And uh, an interesting aspect of our research is uh, the discovery that actually the wage penalty uh, for hybrid entrepreneurship is uh, less severe for women compared to uh, men because this suggests that hybrid entrepreneurship is uh, perceived uh, and rewarded across, uh, across uh, uh, genders. And it might uh, be more or less uh, beneficial uh, based on, uh, on uh, genders. Overall, the studies uh, identifies uh, bargaining power as a key factor uh, behind uh, this uh, uh, wage penalty. And we are in the process of revising the paper to really understand uh, which are the mechanisms behind uh, this uh, uh, wage penalty. In addition, and this is uh, uh, something that we are doing now, we are trying to understand who is more likely to become a hybrid uh, entrepreneur. And here we are in the early stage of uh, the analysis. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I'm working on uh, basically three uh, interconnected uh, uh, research uh, um, agendas. Um, so the first one is uh, uh, entrepreneurship in general and its uh, um, socio-economic uh, impact. So in this uh, 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 area of research, I'm working on uh, uh, two different projects. One is uh, on uh, female employment in startups and how this is affected by uh, labor market flexibility. And uh, this, uh, uh, this study aligns somehow with my interest on uh, how entrepreneurship uh, uh, ecosystems can uh, really uh, promote inclusive and uh, more gender balanced uh, um, ecosystems. And the second project is on entrepreneurship and uh, inequality, and in particular, the role of uh, incumbents. So this is my first uh, big uh, uh, research agenda. The second area of research uh, is really related to um, strategic management and uh, firm performance. Uh, I've been always uh, uh, interested in understanding uh, uh, what determines uh, the financial performance of, uh, performance of firms. Some of my studies have been uh, looking at contexts like private equity and other contexts, and I want to keep working in this area. And here I'm studying uh, what basically, for instance, have a study on uh, what determines a uh, firm's uh, investment. And here we are looking at uh, how the local institutional quality affects the um, investment uh, behaviors of a state uh, own uh, companies. So this is uh, very aligned uh, with, uh, um, you know, strategic management and firm performance. And I have uh, other uh, working papers. And third area of research, which is uh, relatively new uh, and uh, it's very uh, early stage, is uh, in general uh, um, innovation and uh, uh, organizational learning, machine learning. So here we are uh, studying how the role of uh, uh, humans uh, affect uh, the learning of machine learning. So uh, this project basically uh, studied the intersection of human expertise and uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, we try to understand how the interventions of uh, the humans uh, in what machines do uh, in uh, um, certain strategic context uh, might affect the quality of uh, their prediction. So the last uh, topic is very aligned to my early interest, those that I developed during my PhD program on organizational learning, but with a twist on uh, uh, machine learning, in particular uh, on this uh, sort of human in the loop approach, where there are machines that are taking over certain important uh, decisions and the experience of the humans contribute somehow to the formulation and improvement of uh, uh, the decisions. You know, I think that uh, uh, in the field and also in the business world, people tend to be either pro 
or cons. So either in favor or against, but I think this is a simplified uh, uh, view of the world. What uh, we have to do as usual as, uh, as researchers is to understand under what conditions basically AI can uh, really provide uh, uh, some help, under which conditions AI can and should probably substitute humans, and uh, uh, under what conditions instead uh, humans will keep having this sort of competitive advantage over uh, AI. And we have to understand also, and this is, I think, uh, really fascinating, in many tasks, uh, uh, AI is taking over um, the responsibility, okay, but still needs the predictions of humans. I think this is the crucial point. We will still need uh, humans to provide uh, AI feedback and uh, information whenever AI fails. And uh, this concept of the human uh, in the loop, which is uh, coming from uh, uh, the research in AI, is uh, something extremely important. Uh, a lot of uh, like people uh, in AI and uh, uh, are studying this, but I think we should also look this, uh, uh, look at this from our perspective. My first uh, uh, suggestion is that uh, uh, passion should drive uh, uh, should drive uh, uh, research. Now, one common characteristics of uh, successful uh, and good researchers is uh, this uh, um, passion, this this intrinsic motivation for uh, uh, what uh, uh, they do. Now. Research is something that takes a lot of time, takes a lot of commitment. And uh, sometimes uh, you might somehow feel exhausted in terms of resources. So if you have passion, all the challenges and the problems of the publication process uh, uh, are somehow overcome. So my first suggestion is uh, really, uh, you know, focus on uh, what you like. Um, the second element, I think, is uh, uh, collaborative uh, spirit, okay? Um, now, uh, researchers can be somehow isolated uh, and they need to spend a lot of time uh, doing revisions, analyzing data, uh, reading the literature, and uh, it's extremely important to build a sort of network of, uh, of uh, co-authors that uh, uh, can uh, um, can uh, really help you in uh, in uh, in um, in uh, in the publication process in general. So uh, working with people that have complementary skills, uh, people that are committed, uh, people that have a passion for what you are doing is extremely uh, helpful and is extremely uh, nice. I must say that uh, collaborations are also important for your well-being uh, because if you work with people with whom you like to work, then uh, the challenges of the publication process uh, will become uh, uh, less. Uh, uh, severe. Uh, third, uh, uh, third suggestion, uh, and I see um, is something that uh, uh, successful researchers do is you know stay informed and innovative. Our field uh, uh, is changing, changing in terms of theories, changing in terms of priorities, changing in terms of technologies, uh, uh, changing in terms of uh, uh, methods, uh, changing in uh, uh, terms of uh, uh, um, business trends uh, uh, um, and other factors. So the only way in which you can uh, keep up uh, this kind of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, trends is to stay informed. So try to be curious. Try to uh, read uh, what the others are writing, uh, and so on and so forth. So stay informed and uh, uh, innovative. Uh, Another suggestion is learning from feedback. I think uh, that uh, uh, successful individuals uh, um, view critics as opportunity to improve their work, okay? In our uh, job, we take uh, uh, rejections, okay? <laughs> uh, and uh, um, it's extremely important that uh, these rejections are not uh, 
uh, taken as like a setback, but they are taken like uh, an opportunity to redefine and improve uh, uh, improve uh, uh, your work. So um, I think that uh, this uh, ability to learn from feedback and leverage rejection is something that uh, uh, you need uh, uh, to do. And I must say, you never learn it, right? Uh, because uh, it's something that uh, takes time. There is a learning process uh, behind uh, um, all of this. And the last point is probably a commitment to quality. It's important uh, uh, to prioritize uh, quality over quantity um, because uh, we have limited resources, uh, financial, cognitive, emotional, <laughs> and uh, it's important that you focus these resources on the most important projects. I, I think, as I mentioned, I'm uh, um, fascinated uh, these days by activity load, and so that's something that I, I studied in uh, uh, my... Uh, um, paper in organization science. And uh, uh, I looked at activity load uh, from uh, an organizational point of view. And uh, um, for sure, uh, that paper um, highlights uh, the challenges of activity load and uh, uh, can be like a sort of base to analyze uh, now some of the challenges that firms uh, are uh, uh, facing uh, uh, these days uh, in terms of additional activity load uh, because of a uh, changing world, uh, new technologies, uh, AI, and changing environmental factors. So that's probably one area. Thanks for, for this question. I've been uh, director of the PhD program uh, uh, for six years, or so um, I've observed uh, uh, several PhD students. Uh, but I'm not sure that, uh, again, I have a recipe <laughs> for this. I have uh, probably some suggestions. I don't know how much they are going to impact uh, PhD students, but you know, are things that uh, I've uh, somehow observed. So the first uh, the first uh, lesson is that you need to maintain uh, like an healthy work-life balance, okay? Uh, research is something that uh, can uh, absorb of uh, all your resources, basically. can be uh, very uh, intense uh, and uh, is extremely important that you, throughout your PhD journey, uh, you keep in balance the personal uh, and the work uh, um, activities. Um, very often uh, uh, we tend to uh, put our personal life, uh, um, you know, uh, on hold while we do a PhD program. Uh, but you know, this is not always uh, something uh, um, something positive. Well, second uh, second suggestion is uh, communicate expectations. So uh, the relationship between the PhD student and uh, and uh, the advisor is uh, is crucial, and is extremely important for PhD students to communicate uh, their expectations to the advisors. And there is is extremely important that the advisors communicate to the PhD students uh, their expectations. So uh, communication is not always uh, easy. Uh, because sometimes uh, the PhD director uh, advisor puts the uh, bar too high. Uh, and so communication does not become uh, uh, very easy, but it's extremely, uh, extremely important to communicate expectations. Third uh, suggestion lesson, well, uh, uh, invest your time in literature review. Uh, I think that uh, uh, it's extremely important that uh, uh, you spend enough time reading the literature uh, while you are a, a PhD student. This is going to be like a special moment. It's a special moment of uh, the life uh, of a person. You are usually not teaching. You are focused just on research. And uh, you have to invest time in the literature review understanding what's coming out, what others are doing, uh, reading working papers, uh, trying to connect uh, all the different species uh, uh, together. So um, this is extremely important and you should do um, as soon as possible uh, in your, um, in your uh, uh, PhD. The fourth point is uh, 
uh, be organized, okay? So um, as I mentioned earlier, we are all subject to activity load and high activity load. And when uh, you are coping with different activities, it's extremely important that you are well organized. So oh, my suggestion is really um, try to have a strategy to organize your data, your code, your literature review, and try to keep uh, uh, everything uh, um, extremely uh, well done. The, first, the fifth uh, lesson suggestion is uh, uh, start writing uh, as soon as possible. Um, writing uh, is, uh, and in particular, scientific writing, academic writing is very diff different from uh, um, other types of uh, writing. And it's something that you need to learn. Uh, and uh, uh, it's extremely important that you spend time uh, writing, um, um, you know, early. A six point, uh, six suggestion is uh, uh, be honest with your advisor. Uh, as in every business uh, human activity, there are going to be tensions, there are going to be problems, okay? And I think that uh, an honest and transparent communication with your advisor is going to help uh, to uh, solve uh, uh, the problems. This is uh, uh, important. Somehow, sometimes the PhD students uh, don't like to share with uh, their advisors, for instance, their weaknesses, uh, but sometimes the advisor could help uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, overcoming some of these uh, weaknesses or also the positive things, why not? <laughs> so if there is something that you really like uh, and that you would like to do more, you should really share this uh, with uh, uh, your advisor. Another uh, key lesson and uh, uh, suggestion is uh, uh, socialize. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, sometimes researchers are, uh, uh, you know, focused on their work uh, and they do not uh, socialize too much. We do not have enough time for uh, certain things. Instead, socialization is uh, crucial for uh, for. Uh, for, for us, okay? Uh, it's important to find the new co-authors, it's important to understand what others are doing, uh, it's important to find uh, solutions to problem, it's important to laugh, okay? To have, uh, you know, to have uh, nice, uh, um, you know, nice experiences with others. And so socialization is, uh, is crucial. And the last point is about uh, uh, focus, uh, on your well-being, okay? We tend to think that uh, uh, when you're a PhD student, you need to push, 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 and forget about uh, uh, and forget about you, your interests, your passion, uh, your social life, your personal life. And I think this is uh, uh, very dangerous uh, because in the end, uh, we want to be not only good researchers, but we want to be also somehow. Um, people satisfied in general with uh, their life. So I think that uh, even during the PhD uh, program, you cannot uh, like uh, put uh, on hold uh, your, uh, your life. And so f you need to focus on your well-being in general. This is uh, something uh, that uh, um, I would recommend any PhD student in general, but also I would recommend this to any researcher in general. <laughs>